I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we will understand complete concepts of how do we simplify radical expressions. Now, I have taken an expression which is very complicated to begin with. However, we are going to split it or put it in parts so that we understand all the concepts. So the question to work on is to simplify square root of 8 a cube b divided by square root of 27 c square. But how are we going to do it? As I said, we'll start from basics. You need to understand what is square root of 8? What is square root of 27? What is square root of a cube? What is square root of b? And what is square root of c square? Once you know that, you can easily write down a simplified form. Now here is another issue. We might sometimes have to do rationalization. Now that will be required if you have a radical in the denominator. So we say rationalization of denominator. So the example which I have taken has all these components. So if you watch this video carefully, you can actually understand the complete chapter of how do we simplify radical expressions. Does that make sense to you? Well, you can also learn from me directly by sending an email on the address given. You can always join my classes and learn directly from me by sending an email on the address given. We do organize individual and group classes. You can excel as many students have done before. The winner of this year's Certificate of Achievement Shulik Leader Award is Akshi Kandivani. Great. Our student, Akshit, gets highest marks and the most prestigious Shulek Leader Award. You can be there. Join our classes. And get ready for a bright future. So now, let us see how do we simplify the given expression. So let's begin with the basics. So once again, here is our expression. Now we need to understand what is square root of 8. We need to break this part into product of something which is a perfect square, which is 4 in this case, times 2. 4 times 2 is 8, and square root of 4, as you know, is 2. And square root of 2 will remain as such, and therefore, I could write this as 2 square root 2. Make sense? So, this is broken down to the simplest form. To give you an idea how square root of 8 can be written and that is equal to 2 square root 2. Well, let us practice with square root of 27. So the whole idea of having this question is to understand the complete concept. So I hope you got my point, right? So 27 is what? 3 times 3 times 3, that is 3 square. So we have a perfect square which is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. And therefore, I could write this as square root of 9 times square root of 3. Now, square root of 9 is 3, and we are left with square root of 3. So, that is how we simplify this in steps. Clear? Now, once this is clear to you, we can always write what is cube root what is square root of a cube? Okay. Well, that 
you can write this as a times square root of a. Make sense, right? You can follow the steps which we showed and directly write down this answer. Perfect. So, I think till now everything is absolutely clear. Now, here comes a very critical part. And the question for you is, what is square root of c square? Now, let's try to answer this question. So, we want to understand what is square root of c square. Well, many students think it is c. Is that so? That is my question. Let's look into this part. So, let me take up an example to understand. So, if I have c as 5, then square of 5 is 25. And when we want to do square root, what do we get? Well, we get square root of 25, which you know is plus 5. Now, think about minus 5 squared. So, if I have minus 5 square, when I square it, it also becomes 25 and the square root is again 5. Do you see that? So, remember, minus 5 is not equal to 5, correct? You see that? So, square root is always positive. You see, we get a result. So, we say square root of anything, let us say x is always greater than equal to 0, positive. It cannot be negative. And therefore, what is square root of c square? Square root of c square is not equal to c. Square root of c square is equal to absolute value of c, always positive. Is that clear to you? Perfect. Correct. So, that brings us to the solution of this particular complicated radical expression. So, you see how beginning with one radical expression, we have understood the complete concept. It is a chapter in itself. So, now let us see how do we simplify this. So, let me rewrite the whole expression. We need to simplify square root of 8 a cube b divided by square root of 27 c square. Now, 8 can be written as 4 square root 4 times 2, which is 2 square root 2, right? So, 8 can be written as 2 square root 2, right? a cube can be written as a square root a and square root b as such. So, I am just breaking this apart into components which we saw, right? As far as 27 and c square is concerned, 27 is 3 square root 3 and c square is absolute value of c. Is that part clear to you? So, basically, you could directly write down this as what is outside the square roots? It is 2a, right? And within the radical sign of square root, we have 2ab. Make sense? And in the denominator, we have 3, square root 3, and absolute value of c, correct? Well, most of you could go directly from here to this. I should say, directly from here to this. The center, I have just put them in order so that some of you might appreciate it more. Perfect. So, we can write the expression here. However, do you notice that we have square root 3 in the denominator? So, that is what I am saying. You cannot leave it in the denominator and therefore, you need to rationalize the denominator.
and then you get your final answer. You get the idea. So let's get back to the question. We wrote this expression as what? Well, square root 8 could be written as 2 times within radical. We have 2 left. A cube can be written as A times A and B was left as such. Correct? And in the denominator, we have 3, square root 3, and absolute value of C. Now, since we have square root 3 here in the denominator, we need to rationalize. It really means multiply and divide by square root 3. You get that step. This is rationalization. Now, once you do that, what is square root 3? times square root 3. Well, that is 3. So, let me write down this expression now here. So, we have 2a and within the radical sign, square root 3 and square root 2 gets multiplied. We get 6 and we have ab there, right? And in the denominator, square root 3 square root 3 gets multiplied. So, we get 3 times 3, absolute value of c. And this could be written as 2 times a square root of 6 ab divided by 3 times 3 is 9 absolute value of c. Do you see that? So that becomes our final answer for the given radical expression. You get the idea. So that is how we have to do it. I hope you have understood. Let's go back and see. How did we derive at this particular result? It looks bizarre. Let's see. What did we do? Well, to begin with, we understood each and every component. Square root of 8 can be written as 2 square root 2 with the steps shown here. Square root of 27 can be written as 3 square root 3. Similarly, square root of a cube. You can see a cube is a square times a and square root of that a square is a. Hmm. How come? Now, here is another very interesting question to answer. I am saying that a cube is a square times a, correct, and is equal to a square root a. Why? We do not have an absolute value here. Can you tell me that? Well, in this particular case, you know, for this to be real, A has to be greater than or equal to 0. You understand? So, that is a hint to you. That is why, since it is already positive, we are not writing absolute value of A. Perfect? So, in this particular expression, you should remember that a is greater than or equal to 0, b has to be greater than or equal to 0. However, c belongs to real numbers. c can be negative because we are c square. Negative number square will be positive. So, this is another important thing to understand and that brings us to restrictions. Writing restrictions is important part of simplifying the radical expressions. In this particular case, C, which is in denominator, cannot be equal to 0, but can be any real numbers. How about A and B? It is slightly complicated. Well, can A and B both be negative? That could help you to answer this question perfectly. So, please write down. The restrictions on the variables a and b in the comments. I hope the video explains the concepts and you have understood them. Feel free to write your suggestions. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.